Mark, great to see you. Nice to have you with us. First, great just give here. us a sense as to how your business looks. You know, I, I, I know RevPAR is up even from May of 2019. That would seem to be a good sign. Yeah, it's definitely progressing. We've got um, clearly leisure travel has led the recovery um, and bookings through the summer are looking very, very strong. Um, we made a big acquisition last year, Apple Leisure Group, and, and that all-inclusive platform, primarily operating in Mexico and the Caribbean, is up 30% in bookings over the summer. Our overall bookings are up about 15%, excluding Asia Pacific, because Greater China is uh, still having a big impact on Asia Pacific uh, results. But the summer is looking very strong. The big, the big change, I think, and the big progression between April and May is um, typically with spring break ending in April, um, you tend to see uh, a, a shift to more business travel, and it came. <laughs> so we're seeing group business, uh, really, really seeing a lot of momentum. Our bookings in May alone were over 40% higher than May of 19 for booking dates in 2022. So lots of momentum on the group side. And even Business Transient is recovering. So we're about 65% recovered to 2019 levels in Business Transient travel. So pretty much across the board, all the business segments and, and leisure are all uh, firing on all cylinders right, right now. One would expect, I mean, there's a lot of pent-up demand for business in terms yes. of conferences that didn't occur or skipped two years at this point. Yeah. Um, back to the consumer, though. You know, what are you seeing in terms of foreign travelers into the U.S.? We've actually had some <laughs> of your peers on from Hilton and uh, Marriott talking about this as well. Some gating issues there, I'm sort of curious, given they do spend a lot more typically than the domestic consumer. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, foreign travelers to the U.S. spend a lot more than domestic travelers do. Um, there are some constraints. Um, there are, there are um, home country constraints, but also testing requirements into the U.S. that are still creating friction. So we need to actually move past this and get over the testing requirements, uh, which we are in discussions with the administration about. Are you going to uh, get near that? I mean, I know Jenny Raimondo has been, people have been speaking to her. I would assume you may have yes. had conversations. Are they ready to say no more testing requirement to get into the U.S.? Not yet, uh, but we are we are trying to make the case that actually the, the things that they think that they're trying to protect against are not really being served by the testing requirements, and it's really creating a lot of friction. So... Uh, foreign travel into the U.S. Is, sti in is still down significantly from what it was pre-pandemic. But you say you're firing on all cylinders. I'm curious how the labor shortage is, is playing a role here because you you hear anecdotally other hotel operators talk about how yeah. they're not able to actually run at full capacity given the fact that they can't uh, staff certain floors or, yeah. or do certain things. Are you facing the same kind of challenges? No question we have been. Um, if you go back to sort of fourth quarter of last year, we had maybe a 20% gap between open positions and filled positions. Mm. That's down to less than 10 now. And we, we fundamentally, different mindset, we changed our hiring procedures dramatically. We um, changed scheduling to make it more flexible because a lot of people still needed to be home for either caring for parents or kids. And we're also trying to pull people who are not, who are out of school and out of work into our industry so across the board, those kinds of things have actually made a big difference in our, in our hiring capability. I don't be personally believe we're going to see a labor market equilibrium start to take hold until probably early next year because there's still this overhang of, of government support that a lot of all the savings that people talk about that consumers have, it's had an impact on people's, um, um, I think, uh, uh, predilection to come back into the labor force. But it's gotten better. It's still not where it needs to be, and we're still short of labor, but um, it's gotten better.